It's a rare opportunity for a college or high school student to see or hear a world-renowned humanitarian in person. But such was the case last week when Archbishop Desmond Tutu paid a visit to Springfield. Archbishop Tutu is no stranger to the city. The last time he was here was when his daughter was ordained a deacon in the Episcopal Church at Christ Church Cathedral. The occasion of his visit this time, however, had to do with health care. Real to Real Steve Kiltonic has our story. It had the feel and anticipation one normally associates with a rock concert or a championship boxing match. As cameras flashed and thunderous applause filled the auditorium, the diminutive man with the cross made his way down the main aisle, everyone straining to get a glimpse. For many of the youngest in the crowd, it may have been the first time they've actually seen him, ever. Those over 40 recognized him instantly as Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu of South Africa. On April 20th, the 1984 Nobel Peace Prize recipient, given for her stand against apartheid, visited Springfield and Batova Gymnasium on the campus of American International College. Tutu spoke to over a thousand students from five colleges and six area high schools. The occasion was the Desmond Tutu Public Health Awareness Series, a partnership between AIC and the Medical Knowledge Institute, or MKI. The collaboration is part of AIC's commitment to improving the lives of children and families in the greater Springfield area. Medical Knowledge Institute is an international nonprofit organization dedicated to health care and providing information from the conviction that health care is a human right. Its mission is prevention through education. MKI recently opened its American offices in Springfield. Archbishop Tutu was introduced by Dr. Peter Battelle, who co-founded MKI in 1999 with Dr. Harold Robles. During his talk, Tutu was inspirational, charismatic, and at times funny. On Saturday, uh, a, a lady came up and she said, I know that face, I know that face. Mandela, Mandela, Mandela? I said, no, Mandela is much more handsome. Uh, <laughs> Tutu was comfortable in this setting as he gazed out over a sea of smiling young faces. Something warms the cockles of your heart. Uh, well, whatever cockles are, uh, the cockles of my heart have been warmed. <laughs> the Archbishop said God has continuously utilized young people to fight against injustices like apartheid or to further a cause. Do you remember when this country was fighting in, in Vietnam? It was young people who used to demonstrate and they forced this country out of the Vietnam War. Archbishop Tutu chastised the media for what he calls a failure to portray youth more often in a positive light. You hardly ever tell the stories of many of these young people. You know, I mean, these young people do some fantastic things. These young people... The Archbishop urged the youth to remain idealistic and not be caught up in the cynicism of previous generations. He asked them to imagine a different kind of world. A world in which all God's children, our sisters and brothers, have enough to eat, have enough clean water to drink, have a good education, good health care. It's possible. He said the world's priorities need to change. Just look at the money we spend on what we call defense, when we could spend just a small fraction of it, a small fraction of that would enable children everywhere to have a decent home. It's a wonderful day when our kids can, can hear uh, a message of hope, a message of freedom, and to be able to under, understand the reality of the world, and most importantly, that they can make a difference in this world. In his final comments, Archbishop Tutu warned the audience as long as a large gap exists between what he calls the ultra-prosperous and the horribly poor, there will never be stability in the world. And defense spending in the name of peace just doesn't work. You will never have the security that you think those guns and those bombs are going to bring you. Let's. <laughs> Archbishop Tutu left the gym as he arrived with a standing ovation.
For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. <laughs>